I have written the most commonly used test to measure auditory sensitivity or uh, what is it? It is a pure tone audiogram. Okay. So in uh, board certification exams, especially the Indian National Board Examination ENT, the stations are usually OSCE type. What is that? Objective Structured Clinical Examination Stations. You will get it. And in one such station, the uh, station will be DOPS. One or two stations. What is that? Directly Observed Procedural Skills. So in that, the usually asked one is perform an audiometry. Perform a pure tone audiometry. You will be given an audiometer along with a subject to test. So you have to perform that and you have to get the graph and interpret on the graph. And usually that is directly observed station. Uh, also, in your clinical practice, you cannot go out with, without seeing a single pure tone audiogram. So in this class, I will discuss about what is this pure tone audiogram, what are the uses and uh, what is the term masking and at the end of this uh, class, I will show you how to perform a pure tone audiogram. Okay. So what is this uh, pure tone audiogram or PTA? It is a graphical representation of threshold of hearing for both air conduction and bone conduction. Okay, so that this is a qualitative as well as a quantitative assessment of hearing and it is we get it as a permanent record. Right? So what are the uses? And of the uses, the important ones I have enumerated, one is the degree of hearing loss. How much hearing loss the patient is having, whether it is normal or it is 20 dB, 30 dB, like that. And also the type of hearing loss, what is that? Whether it is a conductive hearing loss or whether it is a sensory neural hearing loss and whether it is a mixed hearing loss. All this you can get it by performing a uh, pure tone audiogram. And another one is, as this is a permanent record, you can keep it for future references, especially for pre-operative and post-operative uh, comparison or assessment, especially in case of tympanoplasty or uh, meruoplasty and all uh, conditions. Okay. Then the, uh, in medical legal uh, conditions, you have to get the degree of handicap for compensation etc. So you can find out the degree of handicap by uh, this. Each country has their own uh, calculation statement for assessment of degree of handicap. And for hearing aid prescription, only after knowing the type and degree of hearing loss, then only you can prescribe the hearing aid. So this is essential before prescribing a hearing aid. So these are the degree and type of hearing loss, a record for future reference, especially for pre-op and post-op comparison and in degree of handicap in case of medical legal conditions and before prescribing hearing aid. These are the uses of pure tone audio. The next uh, is masking. What is this masking? You have heard using masking, uh, different types of masking, Baronese noise box, white band noise, etc. So what is this? It's very simple. For the audiometric result to be valid, uh, the ear to which the noise is presented should respond. Okay, if you are testing the left ear, only the noise presented to the left ear should be prompt. Isn't it? We have, we have to know the response from the left ear. And if you are using a non-insert type of earphones, a frequency range of above 40 dB, there is a chance that this earphone can vibrate against the skull, isn't it? When the frequency of sound is increasing, this earphone can vibrate. So then what will happen? This will act as a bone conductor and it will cross over to the opposite side, isn't it? You are testing the, uh, on this side, you are putting the earphone. You are giving stimulus to this side and if it is more than 40 dB, this will cross over to the opposite side. Okay, so the sound frequency needed for crossover to the opposite side 
we call it as an inner oral attenuation. non-insert type of hearing uh, <coughs> earphones. For this, for air conduction, for non -ins when you are using a non-insert type of earphones, for air conduction, it is 50 dB minimum. So, if it is more than 50 dB for lower frequencies and it is 60 dB for uh, higher frequencies. Okay, uh, and for bone conduction, and this is for non-insert type, and this will be more if you are using an insert type of earphones. And for bone conduction, it is always less than 10 dB. So for all uh, bone connection uh, audiometry, uh, bone connection tests done by pure audiometry, there will be an interaural attenuation. Okay, it is less than 10 dB, you get a crossover. So, in order to overcome this, we are using masking. So, what will happen? If you are testing this ear, this side should be masked. Okay. So, we are masking this using a sound which is higher than this frequency. So, the effective crossover or interaural attenuation will not happen. So, how will you mask? We mask using uh, the common one is a narrow band white noise. Okay. And another one is Baranese noise box. Okay. So when you give a true stimulus to the testing ear, the opposite ear is masked by giving this uh, noise. So uh, the effect of interaural attenuation will be magnified. So that is masking, usually asked as short note. Hope you got it. Right? So in a Puritan audiogram for air conduction threshold, the tones are tested at frequency range of 125 uh, hertz to 8000 hertz. You know the free, uh, speech frequency comes between 200 to 20,000. So, but we test the air conduction threshold for this frequency range. Why? Because this is the range necessary to understand human speech. Okay, that is why we prefer this range. This is for air conduction. And air conduction is tested with using headphones. And uh, for bone conduction, we use same 125 to up to 4000 only. And for this we use a headband with a bone oscillator. And these headbands are kept in the mastoid region. That I will show when I, along with the how to perform it. Okay, so from this we get a calculation of classification of hearing loss can be mild if it is 20 to 40 dB hearing loss, moderate if it is 40 to 55 dB hearing loss, moderately severe if it is 55 to 90 dB, sorry, uh, 55 to 70 dB and severe if it is between 70 to 90 dB. And uh, profound if it is more than 90 dB. Okay. So this is how you classify hearing loss. Right. Before uh, performing the Puritan audiogram, there is a set of checklist that you have to follow. One is uh, about the audiometer that I will show uh, along with the audiometry. And there is an on and off switch button and also there is uh, uh, switches for giving the tones. Then the earphones and the bone vibrator. So for um, air conditioning we use earphones that can be non-insert type or insert type. Before putting the earphone you ask the uh, patient to remove any uh, ear, uh, earrings or uh, any uh, ornaments which interfere with the proper fitting and adjust the, after putting it, adjust the uh, earphones according to the size of the patient. And for, uh, there are two color, color codes are there. It is a right color for the 
right, uh, red color for the right ear and uh, blue color for the left ear. And the bone vibrator, you have to place it behind the mastoid without touching the pinna and on the non-hair bearing surface. Okay. And uh, coming to the test environment, it is ideally we use uh, noise proof rooms or uh, pre-formed booth, a hearing uh, audiometry booth are available commercially and the ideal one is a two room setting. Okay, that again I will show you the two room setting. And another one is important is the infection control. That is very important especially in this COVID era. Infection control, uh, wash the hand and also the ear phones and when especially if it is an insert type. And uh, uh, mind you, if you are using an insert type of earphones, it should be kept deeply into the canal, external lottery canal. And it should be properly fitting, right? And another one is examination. That is very important. Examination of ear. You have to uh, examine the ear before doing an audiogram. And even if you are sending it to an uh, audiometrician, uh, examine the ear properly and then only send for audiometry. Otherwise, you won't get a correct result. What, uh, what things you have to uh, examine? In the external auditory canal, look for any anomalies. Sometimes the patient will be having an external auditory canal stenosis. Look for the presence of external otitis externa or any other infection that can cause a spread or a uh, spread of infection. And again, if there is wax, wax should be removed properly. Then only go for pure tone audiometry testing. Otherwise, there can be errors in the uh, test result. Then, uh, insertion to the patient. That is also very important. What all things you have to instruct? Uh, remember, instruct in patient's own uh, language, which is proper, understandable to the patient. Uh, instruct the patient they need to sit uh, quietly without talking and tell him that you will examine both ears with different tones and ask him to raise his hand or if you are giving a bell you can give that or if you especially uh, but if you are using a two room setting you may not hear the bell sound so some people will give, give a, a switch for some color bulb or uh, very simply you can ask the patient to raise his hand if he is hearing the sound and another thing ask, uh, ask the patient to uh, sit quietly without chewing, uh, talking, drinking or anything which will interfere with the test result. Okay. Then also you give time, adequate time for the patient to clear any doubts if, uh, uh, if the patient is having any. What about the uh, participant seating? Ideal, I told you it is a two room setting. In uh, any case, the patient should be available or the seating should be such that it will be easy for instruction to give and also you have to see the patient response clearly and also it should be properly seated for reinforcement of responses. Right? Uh, then another one is <coughs> familiarization with tones. What is that? If you are giving a tone for the first time and asking the patient to respond, he may not. So before uh, starting the procedure, give the tones for the patient and tell him these are the sounds you are going to hear and respond to that. So how will you do that? Uh, there are two types of tones. One can be either a pulsed tone or it can be a continuous tone. Pulsed means uh, intermittent tones, continuous tones also. So the better one or the ideal one is a pulsed tone. Pulsed or frequent or intermittent. Because in that case, the, if you are giving a continuous tone, the patient, if they are, especially if a low IQ patient, will, will be distracted and he may not respond properly. So, you give frequent in, uh, intermittent tones to the patient and ask him to respond. So, you start with a 5 dB level. If the patient says, I can hear, then increase to 10 Again the patient says yes, you increase to 15 and if the patient again says yes, you reduce to 10 
and reduced to 5. For 50 percentage of the time, if the patient says yes at every at a uh, particular tone, that is taken as a uh, point of hearing. Okay. So, so that should be that is uh, marked in the graph. And if the patient is not hearing, I will record 5 dB. The patient says I cannot. Again, increasing 10 says no. Increasing 5, uh, increasing uh, 5 to 15 says yes. 20 again says yes. You reduced by 5 dB to 15. Patient says yes. Reduced to 10. Patient says no. Then the first one. 15 uh, dB hearing loss is taken. Okay, that is how you uh, plot the graph. So this is normal. Both air conduction and bone conduction overlapping at a range of 0 to 10 dB for right ear and also for the left ear. This is normal. For right side and left ear, there is symmetrical uh, increase in the uh, dB hearing loss. Isn't it? So the air conduction and bone conduction threshold has increased along with the and there is no airborne gap. So this is sensory neural hearing loss. What is this airborne gap? This is airborne gap. Okay. So uh, bone conduction and air conduction. A airborne AB gap means airborne gap. So here the uh, bone conduction threshold are almost normal with an increase in the uh, threshold of hearing for air conduction. So this is airborne gap which is very typical of a conductive hearing loss. Okay and this you can compare with this which where here this is a sensory neural hearing loss. So there is increase in um, both air conduction and bone conduction threshold along with the, there is no airborne gap. So this is a sensory neural hearing loss and if you are getting as re a reduction in both air if you are getting an increase in both air conduction and bone conduction threshold with an AB gap, then it becomes a uh, mixed hearing loss. Okay, so along with taking the uh, audiogram, you have to fill the uh, name of the patient, uh, then case number, uh, whether male or female, with date and also test number. With this much of information, we can go and see how our audiologist Mrs. Chippy Mohan is doing an audiogram. And the Puritan audiometry is a gold standard test for audiological examination. This is a very old manual audiometer of GSI uh, 61. And the newer ones like Cybel Sound 400, which is a system controlled by digital signal processor, and then resonance and harp from Inventis, all are there with wide price range of up to 3 lakhs rupees and this is an uh, here we measure the air conduction and bone conduction threshold at a frequency range of 125 to 8000 hertz and for air conduction we use earphones uh, this is a non insert type uh, of earphone used for air conduction uh, measurement and there is also a color coding for this and this is for bone conduction we use a bone vibrator which is kept in the mastoid area without touching the pinna and hair and for I said color coding that is a red for uh, right ear and blue for left ear and this is how we kept to keep the bone vibrator both in the mastoid part for uh, bone conduction testing and ideal is a two room setting this is a two room setting and you can see the uh, audiologist and the uh, um, patient sitting at separate room but they can see each other and the tones pure tones are given at uh, specific frequencies and see the patient responding by raising her hand we start at 1000 hertz and increase to 2000, 3000, 4000, 6000 and 8000 and each time the lowest threshold to which the patient respond to 50 percentage of the time is taken as patient's hearing threshold at that frequency and it, this is also done for bone conduction 
and after that it is plotted in the audio uh, audio uh, audiogram with symbols and uh, you can see a thousand heads thousand heads and it is marked at uh, 20 db and uh, that is for the left ear isn't it uh, change to uh, 2000 then change to yeah, 1000 and then uh, 20 db right so that is uh, if we want you can plot it in the uh, paper I have gra graphed paper I have all, uh, earlier shown